The question in the title of this video is obviously very broad, um, so I think it's best we keep it narrow. I'm not going to focus on racial terminology or anything like that. Um, I'm going to main, mainly focus on three words that we know to be very old in the English language and in the Germanic language uh, branch. So those words are cunt, shit and fuck. Um, now it's worth pointing out right to start off with that the word cunt is perceived very differently by um, American English speakers than it is by British English speakers and Australian English speakers. So in American English and US English, um, I gather it's a lot harsher, it's a lot more directed at women, so it's a, it's a gendered slur um, and it's received a lot worse there than it is here I think. In, in, in the UK it's it's got no connotation of gender whatsoever apart from the the the, the meaning the original meaning of genitalia. Um, it really isn't a gendered slur it's just a it's more severe than the word fuck but it's used pretty much indiscriminately against anyone of any sex or gender. Um, it's probably in my experience more likely to be used against a man than a woman marginally although it can be used against anyone it just means that an aggressively unpleasant person basically so um, it's important to point out that difference that distinction in meaning um, because uh, that could lead to confusion within the video um, I won't discuss the the history of the US meaning very much because I don't know much about it um, so with that in mind, in my generation, pretty much across the board, swearing is a very universal thing. It's more unusual to find someone who doesn't swear than to find somebody who swears a lot. More or less anyone of my generation, in, in Britain at least, um, is likely to swear um, an enormous amount. There are people I've met that don't like the word cunt that are my age, but they're, they're increasingly rare, I think. Um, A lot of words have arguably lost their significance because they're used so much in casual conversation. So it's not shocking to hear somebody swear unless they are somebody who is known for not swearing. So if somebody who doesn't swear very much said fuck, you might momentarily not really notice just because the word's not very shocking and then you might think to yourself, hang on, I've never heard that person swear before and then that might surprise you. Um, but I've always wondered how much people swore in the past because it's not something people have recorded very much prior to the, the sort of late, late, late 20th century. Um, in costume dramas we don't see a huge amount of swearing because I think costume dramas in general, their dialogue is not really representative of how ordinary people spoke. And it's not really designed to be representative of how ordinary people spoke, which is fair enough, that's, you know, that's a stylistic choice. Um, but it's, it, it sort of leaves us with the impression that people really didn't swear at all in the 1800s and maybe even the early 1900s, which is, I mean, any of us, you know, any of us can come to the conclusion that of course, of course they did, because these words have existed for a very long time. And, you know, if they just stopped being used for 200 years, then they wouldn't exist anymore, you know. Um, so I've been doing a bit of digging. Um, first, we'll take it back about 50 odd years. And that's obviously well within living memory. Um, a lot of the people watching this video will be able to remember that far back. Um, so I don't want to say anything too wrong. It will differ from region to region. So if you live in a very Protestant you know, village in Yorkshire or if you live in the Bible Belt in the US, perhaps there would be less swearing than there would be in an urban centre. Or perhaps there'd be more, you know, you never, you never know. Or perhaps it would be swearing of a different kind. Um, I've always taken it as a given that people were generally a bit more careful about swearing in the recent past because you have, you have expressions like um, somebody swears like a trooper or somebody swears like a sailor, um, which, aside from implying that troopers and sailors were known for swearing a lot, um, it also implies that it's a notable thing for somebody to swear a lot. You see what I mean? So you wouldn't, you wouldn't remark that somebody swore like a trooper unless it was unusual to swear a lot. You see what I mean? But there are also instances of people in the 1900s, people in the 1800s, remarking in books that people that a particular person doesn't swear very much, or they never swear, which, which also suggests it's unusual for someone to never swear at all. So what you can take from that, I think, is that the average person probably swore a little bit, but not necessarily as much as they would in my generation today in Britain. Uh, there are obviously plenty of recordings of people swearing, um, 
in quite casual contexts in the 1970s and the 60s uh, and the 50s, um, possibly even the 1940s. Put the sound, there's no fuck all sound in here. No short head, yellow belly, it's on a trick. Come on, you cunts. Oh, fuck you now. What's that, Nick? Makes a better show. You understand? Fuck, 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 fuck. fuck. I don't have a line. <laughs> From, now, from the way it's been described, to me at least, in the UK, um, s how much people swore in the sort of 30s and 40s really depended on the individual. So certain people might not swear at all, um, certain people might swear in certain company. So my grandfather never swore around my grandmother, but now she's, she's died, he swears a little bit more, although obviously having not sworn his entire life, he doesn't swear that much. But it's... It's a case of certainly there are some people that didn't swear at all. You know, you can ask your grandparent and they may say that, that you know, they know people that never swear at all, never swore at all in the past. Um, but then some people swear a lot. So I think it was it was more of a spectrum from people who didn't swear at all to people who swore a lot than it is nowadays where most people swear quite a lot and some people don't swear at all. If that's... Not a very convoluted way of putting it. I'll put, I'll put a thing on the screen, as I sometimes do, um, clarifying what I mean by that. Um, I think the lack of swearing you see in films from that period is definitely not an accurate representation of um, there being no swearing at all. So you have contextual clues from, from that kind of period. So the word Burke has been used in the south of England since about the 1930s as an insult. So like, oh, you Burke. Um, and that comes from Cockney rhyming slang Berkeley Hunt, which is um, which which means cunt. So clearly, cunt was being thrown around a little bit enough for there to be a Cockney rhyming slang equivalent of it, um, and just not written down or recorded. I've talked to some Americans who said men swore around each other more than women did in the 30s and 40s and 50s, um, but again, that depends on the people you're talking about. So I'd love to read any comments people might have. Um, of how swearing was when they were young, or possibly um, how swearing is now in their community, if it differs from mine. Um, the 1800s is a very interesting place to go with this, because I think that's the sort of time you, you either... It's the sort of time you don't get the impression of anybody swearing from the literature we have from that time period, or from costume dramas or anything like that. Um, I'm sure we can imagine some, some Dickensian caricature of a sort of barrel-backed old man calling everyone a cunt but you know it's not it's not what we imagine in most spheres in in the Victorian world um, but you do occasionally get swear words in books from the 1800s normally as descriptive terms rather than intensifiers so when I say descriptive terms I mean they you know the words are used with their original definitions so to fuck somebody or um, shit as in feces or cunt as in genitalia um, and this is this is found in erotic novels and things like that. Um, so if, if you want to find examples of swearing possibly being used in a more modern way, so for example as intensifiers or just as exclamations like, oh shit, oh fuck, um, you have to look to instances of people's speech being recorded when they didn't expect it to be recorded. Um, so one example of this is... Um, court transcripts. So transcripts in court have to be recorded word for word. So even though you may scribble out a swear word or, or put a line through it, th the presence of the word has to be recorded accurately because a court transcript has to be accurate. So um, so there was a court case um, describing an incident in 1908, uh, an account of a 47-year-old man in Hackney in London walking past a couple of teenagers talking about their brother. And the man turns around thinking they're referring to him and he says, I'm not your brother, you shithouses. If you come down here, I'll knock your bleeding heads off. Um, this also sort of secondarily implies that at least some people were calling their outhouses shithouses, which is interesting as well. Um, an account by John Brophy that was written in 1930 but described the speech of soldiers in World War I said that the F word was so common in the trenches that when people wanted to instill a sense of urgency, they'd avoid saying it. So if a sergeant said, get your fucking rifles, that was normal. But if he said, get your rifles without the swear word, that was more urgent. <coughs> um, by the 1930s, people were expressing they didn't care by saying um, that they didn't give a fuck. 
You do get some evidence of swear words used in an insulting sense rather than a, just a profane descriptive sense in the 19th century. So a book from 1840 by John Bellenden includes the phrase shit upon you, which it implies is used in an aggressive context. And you find various instances of, as I say, swearing used in a descriptive sense, so sexually charged novels and things involving fuck as a verb, um, but as an intensifier, as in like, oh, you fucking, you fucking bastard. It's not really recorded until the end of the 1800s, as far as I know. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't used as an intensifier before that, because it's it's easier to imagine an erotic novel including the word fuck as a verb than a, norm, a normal novel including the word fucking as an intensifier. You can imagine that one would be more likely than the other, even if both were used. Um, there is one case which you'll probably have seen involving the word fucking, possibly used as an intensifier or possibly not, from, um, when was it, 1528, um, and that's an, an ecclesiastical text. Um, monks used to scribble in the margins, and this monk has written, false are the works which this abbot writ in the abbey of Osney, Elias Godstow, 1528, O.D., fucking abbot. Now, for one thing, we don't know what the O.D. is supposed to stand for, so it could stand for any number of things, and we can't, as modern readers, we can't, without a very good understanding of the scribal traditions of the time, assume what that's supposed to mean. So it could be um, an abbreviation of a Latin phrase that monks used, it could be an abbreviation of a monastic phrase that was never recorded elsewhere or never recorded unabbreviated. It could have just been a, um, a situation of the monk went to write something, forgot what he was going to write or decided against it and then wrote fucking abbot instead. You could imagine a situation where the abbot walked in halfway through the monk writing something shouted at the monk and then left and then the monk wrote fucking abbot out of spite you know we really we don't know what was going on in the room at the time and any any assertion that oh this is clearly what they meant i just spat a fucking array of flecks of spit i'll put a little panel over that so you can't see but um any assertion that you know that anybody knows what what the monk meant is, is you know of course you can't know what the monk meant um, but that is an early, early clear use of the word fuck being used. Other than that, in the 1600s you get the word being used again in a sort of erotic context. So in 1684 the play Sodom contained the lines, bollocks, what was it, bollocks shall daily by her cunt be sucked, she shall be daily by all nations fucked. Um, and that's cunt being used in a, an almost casual sense as well, although you can imagine it would be a, at least a bit shocking. There's a very early audio recording, the full video is very, very interesting, it's by Patrick Feaster, I'll put it in the description. But there's an early audio recording where um, the recording equipment, something goes wrong with it, and the man doing the recording exclaims a certain word. <laughs> The word fuck seems to be a Germanic word, probably from a Proto-Indo-European root, and this might be the same root that comes, uh, that comes up through Latin and gives us the pug in the word repugnant. Um, but it's not a word we find in Old English texts, or really in any older Germanic text I know of, but it does bear the hallmarks of a Germanic word, so there's no developmental reason that the word couldn't have come from Old English. So you could imagine uh, an ancestral word like fukon that would have the reflex of the modern word. Um, the online etymological dictionary suggests an Old Norse origin because it has a lot of cognates in Scandinavian languages and that would be something like Fukka. Something coming from the north does not necessarily mean it's got anything to do with Scandinavian influence. So most of the things separating northern and southern English dialects actually haven't got anything to do with Old Norse at all. They're just a result of communities having been, having been separated for a, um, a long time as most, most language divergences. Shit is a different case, so the word definitely existed in Old English in the verb form shit on. Um, again, it seems to have been mostly descriptive as far as we have evidence for, but to think of the number of European languages in completely unrelated families that use their word for defecation as an exclamation of annoyance or surprise, it would almost be surprising if the Anglo-Saxons didn't do the same thing. Um, whether it was considered rude to use the word in that way can't be known. So it has cognates in other Germanic languages like um, Scheisse in German, um, which is also used as a swear word. There's shit in Norwegian, which as far as I know doesn't have any sweary connotations. It just means shit or dirt. Um, but either way, it's definitely in constant use, probably from Proto-Germanic to present-day English. 
Another thing you find throughout English, and you find this varies through dialects, particularly a couple of hundred years ago when people weren't as connected as they are today, is minced oaths. And this is a case of somebody saying, somebody not wanting to say a blasphemous or, or vulgar phrase, and so almost saying the phrase but kind of mangling it a bit in terms of its pronunciation so they're not actually saying it. So an example of that would be gosh instead of god, or um, in, in the case of a normal swear word, um, sugar instead of shit, like old oh, sugar. Um, and you find this still in the south of England in, in um, expressions like for crying out loud instead of for Christ's sake, or God blind me instead of God blind me. Um, or I suppose in the US, gosh darn it instead of God damn it. Um, the dialect I, I can speak for best is Cumbrian, and in the literature from the 1800s you get an awful lot of minced oaths that seem to be unique to Northern English. Odds scores instead of God's curse, odds wounds and death instead of God wounds and death, God's wounds and death, begok instead of be God. Um, to me it seems like the widespreadness of this throughout dialects and the fact that it occurs in different constructions in different dialects speaks to it possibly being a very old thing indeed. And although we wouldn't consider it to be swearing, it's clearly related to it. Um, there's some suggestion that the reason certain words became viewed as rude has something to do with them being from Anglo-Saxon roots. Um, I'm realizing I'm getting quite sweaty because it's fucking 28 degrees up here. Um, coming from Anglo-Saxon roots and French words sort of superseding them and pushing them into the depths of depravity. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a good explanation because there are words like dirt and muck which are similarly Anglo-Saxon words and meant pretty much the same thing at the time, um, but are, are not considered to be swear words. So I don't think that's a, a great explanation. Um, you, could, you could sort of drag all sorts of arguments about, oh shit sounds harsher, but it's, it's, it only sounds harsher because it's a swear word. You know, if muck was a swear word, it would sound harsher to us. It's, it's really... A comp more complicated situation than that, I think. Um, but if anyone has any insight as to how much people swore in their lifetimes and what the usage was like when they were young, um, or if you've just had a different experience of swearing than me and are of a similar generation, similar age to me, um, I'd love to, to hear about that and possibly to correct any mistakes I've made in the comments um, and direct um, in the description, sorry, and direct, direct people to the comments um, that are relevant. Um, so yes, thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon. I forgot to mention the famous King George VI quote where he said, uh, shit, 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 fornication, fuck, 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 and fuck, 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 and bugger, 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 buggerty, 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 fuck, fuck, arse, Balls, balls, fuckity, shit, shit, fuck, and willy, willy, shit, and fuck, and tits. 2019.